Hello, people and bots. Grandpa Canuck here, and we are in another tutorial for stationaires. Uh, this tutorial is about uh, controlling the gas levels inside uh, a closed space, your living area, for instance. If you need an introductory to using logic chips, see my tutorial on the wall automating the wall cooler that will give you the basics of how to use the logic chips in a situation now with that under control the next thing you need for this project would be a vent on the inside of the area you wish to control so let's wander outside here Now the control essentially is temperature, pressure, and content. We've controlled the temperature using a prior tutorial. And this tutorial, we will use this apparatus here to control the pressure and the content. Now to control the content inside, in this case, we're going to look at the CO2. To do that, you need that inside vent, piping, a filtration unit with the appropriate filter for what you want to control, a vent exterior. Oh, we're on Mars here. You need an input vent and an output vent and a process in between to control it. It will vary depending on your planet, but the principle is the same. So here, to control the CO2, we have put a pipe analyzer here. And as you can see, the pressure is 100 kilopascals, temperature 300, etc., etc., carbon dioxide 3%. So, if we want to maintain that at no more than 3%, because we know in our living space we breathe, we take in and use the oxygen, and we output CO2. So we have to control the oxygen and the CO2 levels. To control the CO2, you need four chips. You need two input outputs. One is a reader, one is a writer, a memory unit to keep track of a constant, and a compare. So what you're doing here is, with the reader, you are reading the pipe analyzer inter internal gas which is here. So we're going to read the carbon dioxide level. Okay, and that you can see that's giving a 0 0.025. Now, we need a constant. What do you want the CO2 level to be at a maximum amount? I've set it for 3% in my example. Your compare unit. You compare these two together. Input 1, the memory CO2 level, 0 0.03, the actual level inside the room, okay, which is 0 0.025. If 0 0.03 is less than the level inside the room, this will test positive and it will turn to a 1. That 1 is, is, can be read by the input here of the compare CO2 level, and if we get a 1 through, this will switch on. And it will output to the filtration unit on. So, the filtration unit will turn on, and as long as there's a filter in it, it will filter out the CO2 and keep it constantly at 0 0.03 or 3% and Keep it there and it won't go over. This process is used for when you know a gas level is always increasing. The second thing, or th sorry, that's the second thing. The third thing you want to do is pressure. Pressure is a little easier. Uh, here we have uh, 100 kilopascals. All you need is a back pressure valve to a vent. So anytime 
that the pressure, this is coming from the inside, is over 100, this valve will open and it will put it out. Oh, that's Bonnie and Clyde, my two green cheek conyers, wanting to get in on the conversation. So that's it. That's pretty simple. Now, in some cases, you may want to add a gas. Here you can see I have my oxygen externally from my filtration system. And as you can see, I have a pipe coming up and going inside. So the reverse is kind of true. Let's go inside. Really need music for these airlocks. Do to do to do, do to do, elevator music, do to do. I don't know. Need something to fill in here. But it would have to be inside the suit because it's external to the suit. When there's no pressure in the airlock, I couldn't hear anything. Ah, uh, physics is a wonderful thing, isn't it? <laughs> Incidentally, I have a tutorial on making this simple airlock as well. Okay. So, we have... Oh, can't see it very well. Uh, right there on the pipe is a one-way valve because we don't want this passing gas backwards at any time. And here we have a pressure regulator. Now, we're using the pressure regulator to turn on and off. So from the same reading of the pipe analyzer, we compare to a constant that we want to keep. And then we turn the pressure regulator on in this case, and it will pump oxygen into the room. So it'll keep the oxygen inside the room at whatever level we decide to leave it at. You can control under pressurization and any other gases in a filtration way, etc. Okay, let's get a practical application of this. Here we have my grow room. And the grow room needs different gas from my base environment. The plants like CO2 and produce CO2 and they absorb the oxygen. So we kind of need the reverse item. Now on Mars, we're blessed with CO2, so we don't have to use tanks for the CO2 here on Mars. If you're on a different planet, you may very well need to use tanks. As you saw, we just expelled the CO2 extra uh, in, our, in our living areas because we don't really need it. Okay, here we have a CO2, which is drawing air in from the outside. It's filtering the CO2 if it's below a certain level and pumping it into the room. So in this case, it's 30%. Okay, same heater design. And here we have oxygen. If the oxygen gets over 1% in this room, because that's the way I set the constant, we will pump it out and it will go into my oxygen storage. And that's it. Plain and simple. You can set every environment differently for whatever your special purpose is. Be it growing plants, uh, taking your uniform off and having living space, or anything else. A number of plants require uh, or thrive under slightly different conditions. So you could specialize your grow up uh, for individual plants or whatever reason. Mushrooms act totally different, for instance, and they actually uh, will use up the oxygen uh, in the room. So that's it. If you have any questions, please, please, please leave them and I'll get back to you. If you like this video, please subscribe and hit that like button and comments. I could never get enough comments. Please leave me comments. So until next time, this is Grandpa Canuck signing off. 
Wishing all you people and bots a good time. Be good to one another. Bye-bye.